Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just grateful to be alive today. I'm thankful to be in God's house today. Would you do me a favor and remain standing as we jump right into this word? Turn with me in your tablet, your phone, your Bible, whatever you got to get the word of God to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number four, verse 32. By the way, all of you first time guests and visitors, we are so grateful that you have chosen to worship with us today. It is our purpose to make sure you experience the love of God. Amen. And all the Life Church staff said, Amen, Amen, Amen. So, Life Church, let's let's not let any visit. If you see somebody that you haven't seen in a while or you've never seen before, don't let them leave here without you letting them know that you love them and that you are glad that they showed up here today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 32. Ephesians 4, 32 is where we are headed this morning. While you're turning there, I want to tell you this, this morning, today is going, I told my wife this morning, I told her, today is going to be a meat sandwich. It's a meat sandwich. Some of y'all are like, what in the world is a meat sandwich? You ever had that sandwich with no, hardly no meat? I'm not trying to call out Subway or Quiznos or none of them, but you ever had that sandwich was nothing but like lettuce and tomatoes and all the fixing? You was like, man, I, I thought I paid for some meat in here. What, somebody says, now somebody might work for Subway or something in here. Don't, don't be calling no names now. Yeah, but, but today not going to be one of them days. It's going to be straight, straight meat. No, no fluff today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 32. I want you to follow along in whatever version you, that you have. It's on the screen. We're reading from the New American Standard Bible, NASB, Ephesians 4, 32. This is what the Bible says. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. One more time. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. If you're not too mean, could you touch about three people, look them right in the eye and tell them this. We about to learn the right way to fight. The right way to fight. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know somebody like, I ain't, I ain't never heard of no church where they tell me we supposed to fight. You, you missed last week. All I can say is just click on the, the YouTube page or go on our website. It'll catch you up. But I want to just pick off where I left uh, on last week as I continue along in our relationship quotient, our RQ sermon series on the area of relationship. If you remember on last weekend, and here's where you need to start paying attention. You might want to take some notes going from this place forward. If you remember on last week, I stopped by stating that conflict, listen to me everybody, is a doorway to closeness. I, I just want to see if seven of y'all were paying attention last week. Anybody remember that? Praise God for Aaron. Praise God for Janika and Erica. Praise God. Okay, I see about three or four. Okay, that wasn't seven. No, that was five. Amen. I'm going to have to see if I can preach to seven people today. Amen. I, I talked last week, listen to me, everybody, about how conflict is a doorway to closeness. And so I want to start our talk on today by beginning with the most common areas of conflict for couples. Ooh, this is getting ready to be good right here. Okay, can I find like the smartest person in the room who's also bold enough to think you know number one? Who, who can I find? <laughs> it was the rapper that said more money, more problems. So if you ain't got no money, how many problems you got then? I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Now, who, whoever that was about to get blessed. Don't you leave here today without getting blessed. Now, unless you cheated off my notes. Did you look on my notes? Okay, praise God. Okay, somebody said she did. I saw a look on them notes. Now, how are you cheating in church? I mean, come on. Okay, now for those of you who got 
receive the notes via email. We apologize for getting them out so late. They will be there on time or Friday next week. If you got the notes, you want to start filling in right here. If you didn't get the notes, you want to write them down or get your phone out and put them on your notepad or however you get it down. We want to go over the seven areas of the seven most frequent areas of conflict. Listen to me, everybody. Now, somebody cheated off my paper and knew number one. But number one is, everybody say money. Money, 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 money. It's no problems like broke problems. Yeah. And by the way, let me, let me not be so super spooky spiritual and tell you this, just a practical tip right here. The answer to most prayers has something to do with money. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, you know, you know he ain't lying. Yeah, come on now. You know, you know he ain't lying. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, all right. Num number two. Who who number two? Who think they might know number two? Okay, nobody. Okay. All right, that's cool. All right, it's all cool in the game. Okay, number two is household chores. Now you have to be married to know household chores can be a trip. Yeah. It's like, how many times is it my turn to still wash them dishes? I mean. <laughs> Y'all pray for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned the bathroom the last 16 times. I mean, can it be your time? Just one time. Amen. That's probably my wife winking at me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I, I preach, but I'm sure far from perfect. All right, here's number three. Number three is children, children, children. We, we, we love our children. I know I do. But children can be a trip. I mean, how many parents in here know? Yeah. You come on. I, I know it's not popular because now every nowadays my wife and I were discussing this last week. It's like we gotta deify our babies and pretend that they perfect and my child the smartest and the best and the nicest and they're gonna be the next president. I mean, come on now. My wife was telling me this right there. She was like, now you know that one, how can I that one jerk in the office, you know he was a child at one time too. And his mama didn't want to tell him, son, you you your your attitude is out of order. And because she placated him, he grew up pretending that those issues weren't real and that he turned out to be the way he was. Can I find like one person in here that works with somebody who's like, yeah, I know that one. I know that one. Yeah. I, I hope they're not sitting on your row. Praise God. Amen. All right. Okay. Now, now number four, I'm going to tell you like this, Nelson. They sure enough didn't poll me because Aaron, it's no way this would have been number four to me. And all the brothers, you, you, you won't feel me right here. Number four, the fourth area of conflict, the fourth area of conflict is sex. Somebody say sex. Yeah, they, ain't, they didn't poll me right here yet, but yeah. They say more money, more problems. Well, more of number four sure ain't going to be no problems. Amen. Let, let a married person wave their hand at me and say, teach this thing, pastor. And all the singles, you better remain silent. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Okay, this is the good crowd. Man, I got the good crowd today. I think we're going to have a good time here. Okay, number five is work, 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 work. Some of us got, you know, that demonic uh, supervisor, that, that crazy co-worker. Well, he must work in heaven, but for the rest of us up in here, yeah. Oh, he's saying that because he retired this week. That's why. <laughs> Put your hands together for Elder Kevin. Praise God. He was with the state of Maryland for over 32 years, and God finally released him, and it's praise God for him. But for the rest of us that still got to go to work every day, that work could be a trip sometimes. Amen. All right. Number six is something called leisure time. Leisure time. Leisure time. Yeah. Now, now at first, you're going to look at leisure time and say, now I understand how that could be a conflict. But have you ever had somebody you were in a relationship with, or maybe somebody who's not in a relationship with in terms of dating or romantic, just somebody you know. I know I got something. I'm about to wink at y'all and call y'all out. Where my sister at? Yeah. Where, where my mama at? You know, they had, they, see, I know God, they didn't pray this week and God wasn't with them because they, they were under the spirit of the evil one and going to call me during the playoffs this week. Now, I told my sister when I saw her, I said, the Orioles been to the playoffs five times in my lifetime. How dare you come in here and interrupt this moment? Of, I get this maybe once every 15 years, and you about to come in here and mess up this World Series, but I said, the devil is a lie. Well, what if it's a death? I said, unless there's somebody dying, I'll be there when the game is over. Amen. Amen. I mean, come on, somebody married. Have you ever had your spouse come on? Can you take out the trash now? And it's the middle of the overtime, third. Oh, you like, what kind of demonic spirit you got up in you? Yeah. And all the married people said, amen. Amen. I think singles know what I'm talking about right there, too. Amen. 
All right, then the seventh thing. Now, don't you say nothing right here. Just wink at your boy because you might be sitting around that person. Seventh area of common conflict is in-laws. <laughs> Church just got quiet up and through here, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's mm, in-laws. Ooh, in-laws. And I'm, I'm going to have to move from in-laws, yeah, because I... I don't want to get nobody in trouble. I, I love my, my mom a lot. Amen. I call her mom just like I call my mom mom. Amen. But some of us got, got some, some, some issues with the in-law. Okay. All right. Let's move on right here. Okay. Now, let me tell you a secret about these seven areas of conflict. All right. Listen to me, everybody, because I want you to understand that though all of them are important, all of them are only surface issues. Somebody say surface. Yeah. And the reason many of us, especially us couples, feel stuck in a continuous cycle, listen to me, of conflict is because we never focus on the real issues which lie beneath the surface. Thank you, Antoinette. What lies beneath the surface? I know a smart person is asking that question right now. Here it is. Don't miss it. Here's what lies beneath the surface. Something simple, but it, don't miss it. It is our feelings. Somebody say feelings. I know some of you are brought up in context where you were not allowed to feel, especially if you're a man, because, you know, us men, we can never show any emotional vulnerability, and we can never let anybody know we're really going through something or we're we in emotional distress. But the reality is, even when you bury your feelings, they still there. Even when you pretend like something that happened to you wasn't painful, it still hurt nonetheless. It was Dr. Greg Smalley who wrote this great book, by the way. Look at me, everybody. He wrote this awesome book. If you don't do nothing by the time this series is over, get, get this book right here. This book literally changed my life and my marriage. This book right here, Fight Your Way to a Better marriage. Dr. Greg Small, you, you want to get this book right here. Now, I wish we had the budget to be able to buy this for everybody, but but we're going to get there one day. Amen. And it's going to be soon. Amen. Praise God. A amen. Okay. He said in his book, feelings are neither positive or negative. They are neither right nor wrong. They just are. That, that, that was better than you know. Matter of fact, you want to take a screenshot of that, that right there. Go ahead and throw that up on your Facebook page. Go ahead and put that on your Twitter account. Feelings are neither right nor wrong. They just are. Now, this is going to make sense in just a moment, so stick with me, okay? Now, I, I want to I I jump right into what I came to talk about today and start with this right here. Why we fight. Answer that. Put that on the screen for me. Why we fight. Why do we fight? Why do we fight? Here's why we fight. We fight over our feelings. I told you you're going to learn that. It's a meat sandwich today. Okay. Now, when I talk about feelings, I'm not talking about basic feelings. Listen to me, everybody. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not talking about basic feelings, Sherelle, like being tired, worried, depressed, sad, or mad. Latoria, when I talk about feelings, I'm talking about intense emotions that we experience, such as, number one, it's on the screen, being inadequate, feeling unimportant, feeling unloved, feeling unwanted, feeling abandoned, worthless, disrespected, or rejected. That's what I'm talking about when I say feelings, okay? Now, we experience emotions like these, all of us, when something happens. And you want to know what that is? Karen, kind of watch this. We experience emotions like unloved, unwanted, disrespected. When do we experience those feelings? When our buttons get pushed. When I buttons all, and by the way, lean on your neighbor and say, we all got buttons. I don't care how spiritual you are, how much you pray, and how much you read your Bible, 
All of us got buttons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, okay, let me help the, the one deep person that's deeper than me. Um, even Jesus had buttons. Yeah. He was half God and half man. At the same time, now you know God and all man or woman, so you know you got more buttons. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 listen to me, everybody, because I need to explain this. See, the, the common areas of conflict are not really the real issues. But what are the real issues are the issues that happen with my feelings when my buttons get pushed. Okay, let me help explain this. Arguments, listen to me. I see, look, watch this. Arguments about money push our emotional buttons that involve insecurity or control. Lean on your name and say, he's preaching to you right now, not me. I will never fight about money. Now, you lean back on the other person saying, now, you need to stop lying. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, when we're fighting over money, it's not over the money. It's over what the money does and how it makes us feel. Lack of security, lack of control. And when I say control, I'm talking about either feeling being controlled, like somebody who trying to make all the financial choices in the household, or the lack of having control when you don't have enough money. Okay? All right, let me let me help. Let me keep just keep rolling down your street. Arguments about children push buttons like feeling invalidated or helpless. Anybody besides me know somebody. Now, I ain't going to tell you to tell on your own child. Know somebody that got that one child that I don't care what you do, what you say, how you say it. And all the people with kids just wink at, just wink at me. Yeah, It's like, I don't know what in the world to do sometimes. Okay, when we fight about the chores, the button that's being pushed may involve feeling taken advantage of. Oh, okay, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Oh, especially men, I want you to pay attention to this part right here. When we fight about sex, often this brings up feelings of feeling rejected or inadequate. Oh, I'm going to stop right there and help every married man for a second by helping your wife. When you say no to him, that was easy. his button will get pushed. Well, Pastor, I have a headache. Did you know it was medical research that's, that tells us that sex is good for headaches? Lean on your wife and say, you know he's preaching to us right now. Praise God. Amen. We're going to try that when we get home. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see when, when you say no and when you constantly say, I was reading an article, Nelson, um, I think it was two weeks ago where a, a, it was talking about a, a, a husband. He literally, because his wife kept telling him no, he literally, Erica, started to put in his journal. He kept the journal of the times that she said no and the reason she gave. And over, yeah, Farron read that too. Okay, praise God. And, and he, he's, I think it was over a six-month period, she came up with over 30 reasons why she said no. Now, now look, look at somebody and say, now you know it ain't, no, it ain't that many no's in the whole world. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, but when you, ladies, when you tell your husband no, he feels rejected, which causes him pain. I told you this is a meat sandwich today. Okay, because it, it's, it's getting real in the field right here. So let me, let me go ahead. Who did the homework last week? I'm going I'm to pretend like I ain't see. I'm going to pretend. I'm going to preach with my eyes closed for a second. Because I'm going to pretend like every hand went up. Praise. I knew this church was. I, see, this is the right church. Praise God for the light. I love the light church. Because everybody's hand is up right now. Oh, man. This is so awesome. Now, why y'all laughing at me? Y'all hands not up? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 This was the homework for last week. Now, because we are church, we operate with grace, so I'm going to give you the assignment again, and then you're going to have to get this week's homework as well. You can't come to church and not get no homework, especially when we cover in serious, substantive subjects like this. Okay, so the homework from last week was this. You want to write this down, take your notes, do whatever, take a picture, record it on your tablet, whatever you do. Think about a recent conflict that you have had. 
You remember that you're supposed to do that? Think about a conflict, recent conflict that you had. And remember I told you if you're married, make sure you do it to something that happened between you and your spouse. And what, remember what I told you was, I, want, I wanted you to answer this question. How did what took place during that conflict make you feel? And I gave you all the choices. I gave you, write this down if you didn't get it, or you can go back to last week's notes, which was made available to you via email. Oh, it's probably on our website as well. But these were the choices. Angry, rejected, humiliated, unimportant, unloved, unaccepted, inadequate, controlled, criticized, disrespected, ignored, taken advantage of. Pastor, I missed half of those. I'll say it again. Angry, rejected, humiliated, unimportant, unloved, unaccepted, inadequate, controlled, criticized, disrespected, ignored, or taken advantage of. So you want to, you want to, this is your homework now. You want to think about a recent conflict that you've had. If you're married, do it with your spouse. If you're not married, find somebody that you can, uh, that you've had a recent conflict with. And I want you to explore your feelings by, 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 by taking an inventory and say, how did that make you feel? And I gave you several choices there. Now, the reason I gave you that assignment last week is so that you can begin to identify what your buttons are and how they get pushed. How do you know what your buttons are? Half you do, half you don't. Sometimes I feel like a nut, sometimes I don't. Okay, yeah, okay, all right, all right. For the rest of you, do this homework assignment. And for those of you who didn't do it, I mean, who who's saying you know what your um, your buttons are, it's still, I believe it will bless you to do it. Did it myself. Um, Let's, let's, let's do the homework. Okay. Now, we, so we talked about uh, why we fight, but now it's important for us to talk about what we are fighting for. What are we fighting for? Okay. Now, watch this. First lady, because when you inevitably push my buttons or when I inevitably push your buttons, listen to me, everybody, it causes me to respond, and the way in which I respond is often influenced by the wounds that are on my heart. Did y'all hear what I just said? Okay, all right, let me help somebody here. Watch this, Rico, watch this. When you push my button, because my button got pushed, it causes me to respond. And the way in which I respond is influenced by the wounds that's on my heart. Watch this. And so when I put this on the screen for me, and this is going to be a tweet-worthy moment in a second, the heart is amazingly valuable, yet it is incredibly vulnerable. The heart. The heart. What, what are we fighting for? What, what, what are we fighting for? The heart. I got to protect my heart because my heart has been wounded and I got some scars and people are hurt me and stuff has happened in my life and people disappointed me and they lied on me and I, I trusted people and they let me down because my heart has wounds. And you push my button, it makes me respond out of that wounded place. And sometimes I end up saying or doing things that I didn't mean at that moment because of my heart. It's incredibly Vulnerable, but it's amazingly valuable. Okay, let, let's look at what the Bible says about our heart. I don't have time for you to turn to all of these, but look up at the screen. Proverbs 4.23. Here's what the Bible says. Just write down the scripture. Now, this, make this extra credit from your homework. You go home, look up these scriptures. You read them and digest them when you get home. Can, can, I, can I find the mature people who just not looking for a word on one day, but you, you need something after you leave here? Okay, praise God. Amen. Okay, hit. you want to write these down. Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Wow. 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 Above all else, guard your heart, because everything you do flows from your heart. Proverbs 23.7 says, for as he, and by the way, let's add she there because we don't want to be gender biased. For as he or she thinks in his or her heart, so is he or she. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says, the human heart 
is the most deceitful of all things. And it is desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Wow. That's crazy. The Bible says that the reason we have issues in our relationship is because our hearts are messed up. And I hear a smart person asking me right now, Pastor, how did our hearts get so messed up? Thank you, smart person. Here it is. And this is, this is where it is right here. Don't miss this. It is because none of us look at everybody on your row and say, he's preaching to everybody up on this row right here. Yeah. None of us comes from a perfect family, nor did we have a perfect childhood. Okay, okay. See, some of y'all like to play in church and pretend. But can I find, you, you ain't got to tell on nobody in your house, but can I just find, like, somebody who's willing to be honest enough and say, I, yeah, I didn't come from the Cosby family. Yeah, that wasn't my story. Yeah, I didn't come from the Partridge family. Yeah, the Brady Bunch, that wasn't my that ain't my testimony. Praise God. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and by the way, that includes you too, the person trying to act, pretend to act like you, you got it all together. I know you. You're trying to act like you do, but none of us are from a perfect family. Why? Because no, there's no such thing as a perfect person. And I was thinking about this anyway. Let me, I know I'm supposed to be on parents next week, but let me just pause right here because I hear God saying this. Sometimes the very things that frustrate us about our children They come from us. I don't understand why she just was disrespectful. He won't listen. He just, he just, just, half of them was from me. All the bad stuff wasn't from the other person, and all the good stuff ain't come from you. Yes, you, we, we got issues that have been passed on to our children, and just like God has extended the olive branch of grace to us, we got to do the same thing for our children. I, I know my kids, going, they're going to have some issues because they come from me who got some issues. But I want them to understand that despite their issues, God takes broken people and puts them back together again. There's nobody too far gone from God's grace where God can't go get you where you are, grab you, and bring you back closer to his heart. I wish I wasn't. I wish I was talking to somebody who's not perfect and knows what it's like to have God's grace come get you on your worst day. Yeah, when you, you want to give up on yourself, God was standing right there with you and say, now, now you finished with your pity party? Because I came here to pick you up. I, I, I came here to let you know life ain't over. I came here to let you know you will recover from this. You will survive this. You will grow from this. You will learn from this. You will be better as a result of what you feel has broken you. Okay, that's, that's, that's all the preaching I'm going to do. Let me get back to this teaching thing. Okay, all right, okay. All right, so now, none of us are from the perfect family. We all got some, some stuff from our childhood. And because of this, all of us have been wounded, and those wounds began early in life. These wounds come from painful and or traumatic experiences that affect our lives and how we relate to others, especially our spouse. And all the married people said, ouch. And all the married people said, ouch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've been wounded. Those of you like me who don't have patience, it's because of stuff that happened in your past. Especially when you were a child. Those of you who got issues with anger. Because you got some stuff in your past. Especially abandonment issues for all the men in here who got anger problems. Check that abandonment thing. That, that normally the, the issue for all of our, my sisters in here who got issues with hooking up with the wrong cat and keep keep going through the same sick emotional uh, cycle with relationships. You keep dating the same dumb person. They just got different names. Check the identity that you are given, especially as a child. And by the way, all ladies, look at me. You cannot receive affirmation from another woman. You got to get that from a man. I'm going to preach to all y'all women. I don't need no man. You need one. Yes, you do. 
you ain't got to be dating none, but you got to, that's the importance of fatherhood. That's why I have nothing else. I know I'm going to make some mistakes. I yell at my kids too much. I lose my, my I, I, I go off on them sometimes, but if nothing else, I know it's my job as their father to speak over their lives. That's what my daddy did for me. He wasn't perfect, but he spoke over me from when I was small and told me the assignment that God had on my life. That's the only reason I'm standing here. When life was a trip, I didn't know how I was going to work out. I heard the voice of my father ringing in my ears telling me, son, you ain't supposed to be like everybody else. Son, God got a destiny for you. There's greatness in you. God got his hand on you. You ain't going to be like everybody else. I don't know what you going to go through, but God got something special for you. Every parent, your, your job is to give your child an assignment for all y'all who don't have children or not, or, or think about having children one day. When you name that child, part of that name is that destiny. That's why you can't play with names and just whatever, Shakresha and Charmeet. You, you can't just, just whatever somebody, oh, that was nice. I, that was a cute name on the show. Yeah, yeah. No, that's too important. Because, see, I look my baby six years old now and I say, I, you, you named after me. Do you understand what your name means? Your name means warrior. Your name means leader. Your name means conqueror. You're not supposed to go on the path of everybody else. You're supposed to take the path of the most resistant because sometimes when you're in the minority, God will show up with just you and him as the mature. Yeah. It's important, parents. Speak destiny over our children. Okay, now, now listen to me. Listen to me. The enemy will use, watch this, John. The enemy will use any person, including our parents, teachers, family members, friends, classmates, boss, coworkers, whoever. He will use any person or and so that put that up on the screen for me. He will use any experience from work, from, from, from home, dating, divorce, at church. He will use any person or any experience in order to wound us. Yeah. And here's what he's trying to do when he wounds us. He's trying to subtly reassign our identity. God, this is good. Okay. See, see, those of us who grew up with some negative and nefarious family members, maybe a parent who had some of their own issues that sometimes they projected it onto you. The, the devil, it wasn't them. See, stop looking at people as the devil. No, it's a real devil. See, you can't believe in God and not believe in the devil. It was a real devil whispering in their ear, wounding their heart so that they could wound your heart. How many of you in here know that it's hurt people that hurt other people? Yeah, that, that, that's why you got that demonic gossiping sister in your cubicle. That's why you got that one sister that's crazy because the enemy is trying to do whatever he can. That's why you've been through some of those issues in your past because the enemy's trying to use whoever and whatever he can to wound you so that he can put a new assignment on your life. No, you're not God's uh, ordained. No, you're not called and chosen. No, God don't got his hand on you. A mistake. You're, you're nothing. You're destined for failure. Nobody ever been nothing that's ever come from your family. All y'all supposed to be broke. Ain't nobody supposed to have nothing. You know, ain't nobody ever been able to keep a man. Ain't nobody got no good marriage. And then your family, and your friend, the enemy's trying to use all that stuff he can to reassign your identity. But can I preach to five of y'all in here? God, I feel this right now. Can I preach to five of y'all in here and tell you what the Bible tells you? Because in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, here's what the Bible says. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power of God may be of God and not of us. God, help me in here. Even though I'm wounded, even though I got baggage, even though I've been broken, God says in all of that, my power will show up so that it won't be about you, but it will about me. Is there anybody in this church right now who can praise God? Because when it looked like you were down and out, God came to your rescue. Mm, I, I said I wasn't going to preach. Let me, let me, let me, y'all not going to make me preach. No, I'm going to sit here for these next five minutes and teach this last part. Y'all not going to do it. John, don't you, don't, mm, no, not today. I'm teaching. I'm staying right. 
if, if I get up, somebody just tackle me and sit me right back down. My, my wife, just make sure you sit yourself down and teach this thing. Okay, because I, I want to do this last thing. Now, this is the most important part of the message. So if you checked out the last 10 minutes, you on Facebook, whatever, this is the time to zone in. Because if you pay attention to this part, you will be blessed. Your life will be better. Your marriage will improve. Now, if you don't pay attention, that's on you. You That's that's what you do. But I'm telling you, this will bless your life if you pay attention right here. Because I'm going to talk for the next seven minutes about how to fight. Then I'm sitting down and we're getting out of here. How to fight. First of all, it was the iconic American preacher, Charles Swindoll, who I don't always agree with on everything. He said, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. That, that's, that's for the six of us who don't want to make adjustments, but we only make excuses. Yeah. Somebody did this wrong. Won't nobody give me a job. Won't nobody give me a chance. And won't, won't, this, nobody won't help me. It's, it's 10% of that. It's 90% of how you adjust to that. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, if this is true, then part of managing conflict is learning how to measure my response. Did, did y'all hear what I said? If life is truly 10% of what happens to me, and 90% 90, 90 of how I respond to what happens to me, then what I got to do is learn how to measure how I respond to what happens to me in life. Because when I react and respond to everything that's done to, to me, I'm giving people power over my life. And some of y'all right now in here got people who are put... It, the strings are invisible, but you a puppet, and they will pull your strings, and all I got to do is do this, and it gets you to respond this way. All I got to do is say this, and it'll get you to go off. If I just, if I don't do this, then you're going to do that, and people are controlling you emotionally because you have not learned how to manage your response. Okay, all right, all right. Now, I got six minutes left. Give me three minutes to talk about the right way to fight. But before I get there, let me talk about what we often do, which is the wrong way, okay? And some of y'all going to see yourselves. Actually, everybody who's grown will definitely... Teenage, you're going to see yourself up in here, too. Yeah, probably children, too. Just, just watch this. Okay. Now, because I, I want to briefly discuss... Give me three minutes on this one, then three minutes on the next, then we get out of here. I want to briefly discuss the two most typical responses to conflict. This is how we normally respond to conflict, and it's so, so wrong. Now, 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 now you, you know these two. It's called fight or flight. Answer that, put that on the screen. Is that, yeah, okay, great, yeah. Fight or flight. Say that with me. Fight or flight. Okay, Pastor, what you mean by fight? Here it is. Answer that, throw it on the screen for me. Fight, here it is. When I fight, fight the wrong way, it involves complaining. Anybody know just one person in your life, that's all they do is complain. Nothing ever satisfactory or good enough for them. It's, it's always something to complain about. Am I, am I preaching to anybody? Okay, this, just, yeah. You look at somebody and say, it's either you or me. I don't know which one he's preaching to. It's one of us. Yeah, it's got to be. Okay. All right. Here's another way we fight that's just so wrong. Criticize. Mm. And by the way, for all of you who like to reach for criticism, you can't tear down what you had first not built up. Ooh, that was good. Mm. Yeah. See, you, you can't always reach for criticism to, to try to tear me down if you haven't first built me up. That's for all of you who marry who don't understand the importance of learning how to speak into your spouse's life and to, to speak positively. You know, the Bible says life and death are on the power of the tongue. You got to learn how to speak those things that are not as though they are. Because if all you do is look at the negative and you always complaining and you always criticizing, you're tearing me down, but you never built me back up. And how can I become anything if you always tear me down in the first place? Okay, here's, here's another one. Wrong way to fight. Blame. Somebody say blame. Yeah. Everything, this, the, from all my blaming people, this you right here. Everything is always your fault. Yeah, somebody married to somebody who loved that blame thing. Yeah, it, it's never equal share. It's never my problem. It's never me. It's always your fault. Okay, here's another one. Somebody going to get blessed by this one right here. Wrong way to fight. Wrong way to fight. Getting defensive. Ooh, it got quiet up in here. Blessed quietness. Holy quietness. Getting defensive. What I mean, Pastor, what do you mean by getting defensive? Attempting to justify, explain, or rationalize bad behavior because 
it's your fault. I'm, I'm always on the defensive. Can't never accept any responsibility. Okay, here's one, here's one. Somebody's been in a relationship with somebody like this before. Something called, I don't know why I got all this movement, but I need, I need the movement to be like, nah, yeah, nah. Need y'all to work with me now. This is the most important part of the message, and you about to call somebody to miss this. I need I, ushers, come on, where y'all at? I need some help. Here's another one. Y'all focus, y'all looking at me. Look at me right now. Don't, don't look at nothing around you. Ushers, as a matter of fact, don't let nobody come through that door, okay, until it's over now. There should be no movement now. Yeah. They can, they can stand in the hall, but not here. It's too important. This is, this is God's moment. Okay, now listen. Here's another one. This was called invalidate. Somebody say invalidate. This is when we minimize the other person's feelings by saying stuff like, it's not that big of a deal. You're always trying to make a big deal about stuff. You're always getting emotional. You, that's invalidate. Remember I told you before, if feelings are not right or wrong, they just are. Yeah. Okay, hit, hit. I'm preaching to me right now. This is my part, so I'm just going to put my hand on my own head preach to me. Here's another wrong way to fight. Become Mr. or Miss Fix-It. Mm -hmm. That's when we always trying to focus on getting to the solution as quick as possible. Yeah, don't, don't want to actually address the problem. We just want to come up with a solution real quick. Yeah. Can you wave your hand and just pre preach to yourself right now? Yeah, okay, all right. All right, Here, here's one. Somebody going to feel this. Wrong way to fight. Use of humor. Some of y'all laughing right now, but I ain't saying nothing funny. Okay. Yeah, see, use of... Some, it's me? Oh, all right, praise God. I ain't think this was me. Okay. Yeah, use of laughter to divert attention from the real issue. You ever been trying to deal with something with somebody and they always trying to laugh or make... No, I'm not joking right now. I don't want to hear about what happened on the show. Don't tell me no. No. I don't care about what my face look like or my hair. I'm, no. I know I got crust in my eye. I know I ain't I cheap paste all on my shirt. Ah, you're going to deal with this. I'm sorry. I got issues. Y'all pray for me. Okay. All right. Here, here's one. Oh, ooh. I, I, I know a couple people here. You know this. You right here. Use of manipulation. Just elbow somebody near you. Say he might be preaching. You right up through here. Yeah, this, this might be for you. Use of underhanded efforts in order to control. That's manipulation. Mm -hmm. Here's one. Here's one. Getting angry. Getting angry. Just one little thing. Just set you up. You like a ticking time bomb. Just wait. Had a hard day at work. And instead of processing that stuff before you walk through the door, you just waiting for the first person that just look at you the wrong and you just gone. You, I just said hello. I mean, what? I didn't like the way you... I just said hi. Angry. Okay, here's one. Ooh, exaggeration. You never, you always, it's all, is it really always, is it really never, or are you exaggerating? Okay, here's one. Ooh, this is dangerous. Here's another, this one. Wrong way to fight. It's called acting out. Mm -hmm. Acting out. Don't say nothing right here, but this might be you. What, what do I mean by acting out? Any anesthetizing behavior such as drugs, alcohol, affairs, internet, anything that's going to make me forget about the pain of my present. So I don't have to deal with the conflict. I just act out. Okay. That's the fight. Now let's get to the flight. Flight. Here it is. Flight. What's, what's flight? Give me some examples, Pastor. Here it is. Now I got to move quickly because my time is running real fast. Flight. Write this down. Get your notes. However, first way of flight is when you withdraw. You, now, now don't, don't raise your hand and, and tell on your spouse or your significant other, whoever. But you know, you know somebody who knows somebody who be like, I'm just done talking about this. How you done after like two minutes? We in the middle of trying to work this out and you always like, what? You done? Like when are we? Okay, so does that mean in ten minutes we gonna come back or tomorrow or when? Can I get at least get a time frame? We gonna? I'm just done. And by the way, for those of y'all men who are laughing, I found out researching this week that almost eighty five percent of withdrawals are actually men. It's not the ladies; it's us guys. Okay. Ooh, this, this gonna help somebody. Don't you say nothing right here because you know it's your part. I need a woman, don't you, don't you say it, but I know, I'm going to wink at you. I know, I know. 
you ain't withdraw, but you will withhold. Okay, I, I got kids in here, so I got to be careful, but I'm tired. I got a headache. You ain't, not, you know you. Can I find a sister to look at another sister and say, you know, we got to do better. Praise God. Amen. We got, we got to get better. Amen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Avoidance. I don't see why we need to talk about this right now. You messing up my perfectly good day. I was having a good day till you came in here with that. Avoidance. All right. Here's somebody, especially you millennials, going to be able to relate to this. Becoming apathetic. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. Just, okay. Whatever. Whatever you say. No, I'm good. Well, you ain't listening to nothing they say. You didn't shut down 10 minutes ago. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody know about this one, including the children. The silent treatment. Okay, let me see if I can find two people that's willing to be really transparent for one more. Have you ever rode to church with the silent treatment? I, I love this church. People honest. Yes. That's why me and my wife don't ride to get. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I praise God. She said, don't you act crazy. I'm not. Praise God. All right. Okay. All right. Here's another one. And I got a roll. Pacifying. Agreeing. To, I, okay, whatever. I, just agreeing to anything and having no intent with a follow through. All right. Give you two more. Playing the victim. You always got a sense of feeling wronged, unfairly accused. You know, you always the victim. You always the one being done wrong. Okay. And the last one for flight is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. The refusal to move on. Constantly reliving and replaying the past. Now, if we're going to move forward, then we got to go forward. But if you're going to keep trying to drag us back, let me know now. Because you said you forgave me. And if you forgave me, it's time for us to go forward. Okay. All right. Write this down. I got like a minute and a half. I, I got to quit. Okay. All right, so let me give you this. Rules for fighting family. And this is your homework. You got you to gotta implement these things this week. Okay, don't play with this. This is, this is it. This is going to grow you right here. You're going to be better next week if you come back and do what I'm telling you. All right, rules for fighting family. I want to give you three things, three rules. Okay, when your buttons get pushed, first thing I want you to do, number one, is learn how to push pause. Somebody say Pause. Y'all know, who, where my sports fans at? You know that when things ain't going right in the game or people tired, what they do? Sometimes in relationships, we got to get a gotta get a timeout here. I need a timeout before I get a technical foul. Timeout, I'm about to get thrown out the game. They about to throw a flag on me. Timeout. What I mean by that? Okay. All of us got different ways of pushing pause. But here's some, here's some suggestions that I have for you that, that I know some of these work for me and I try to, I've tried them and I've tried them at times. For some of us, it's just a matter of taking a few deep breaths. For other of us, go exercise for a minute. For some of us, you know, go, go read your Bible, your favorite scripture. For some of us, we need to go do some housework or some yard work. Just get that energy and exercise, kind of get your mind clear. Some of us need to go bake something. Some of us need to go clean something, go cook something, whatever. We got to do some of us go for a drive, soak in a hot bath, whatever. Some of us need to do this right here. Write your, learn how to write your feelings down. Your spouse, some of you got, are married to people who are not good at communicating face-to-face -face because of issues in their past. So learn how to give them a, a, a way that they can receive what's on your heart by writing it down. Because when I write it down, you can't cut me off. You got to just sit there and receive everything I'm giving you. Okay, so, so that's number one. Learn how to press pause. Here's number two, and this one you probably never heard at church. This is deep. Don't miss it. Keep God included in the conflict. Keep God included in the conflict. When that person pushed that button, and it's easy to push the button, but when they push that button, and you about to go off, and maybe you did go off, because sometimes you just it just slipped out before you even got a chance to get it under submission. Sometimes you gotta go back in the middle of I said no use not. You know what? Hold up. We gotta get God back in this house right now. 
I, I know I'm wrong, you're wrong, we're we going to resolve. But I, I, I just feel an overwhelming sense of the evil one trying to come in and disrupt what God has brought together. We got to get God back in this house right now. Because some stuff is out of order. And we, we need God's covering and God's protection and God's blessing so that God can keep his hand on our household and that he can continue to smile on us. We got to keep God included. I'm telling you, if you keep God included in your confidence, like I shared with you that scripture last week in Proverbs 13, when you see that your wife is a treasure from God, that your husband is a gift from God, you're going to treat them differently. Don't matter how much they act up. When, when, you, when you understand it's important, you, you, cannot, you, can, you cannot manage without God. Marriage is too hard without God. Okay, number three, and I'm done. When conflict does come up, I'm going to teach you this last thing. This is number three. It's a quick process. A quick, this is what you need to do for your homework. Quick four-step process. And the process is called lava. L-A-V-A. -A. Lava. Somebody say lava. The L stands for listen. Somebody say listen. Okay, here's what you need to do when you're trying to listen. Don't talk. I thought a woman would wave at me right there. Okay, all right. Maybe a man need to wave at me. Okay, see, listen. Learn how to listen. Pastor, how can I learn how to listen better? Okay, first of all, don't talk. And then second of all, when you talk, you want to summarize what's being said to you instead of trying to rush to your rebuttal. So, so, Erica, what I hear you saying is, Pastor, you keep saying this is over and you're taking five more minutes. L Latoya, what I hear you saying to me is, Pastor, you said this was going to be over 15 minutes ago. And now this is like, what's going on, Pastor? You said it's going to be easy to digest and it's getting hard. Okay, yeah, you see, that, that's what I'm doing. I'm listening. When she tells me something. When, she tell, when he tells me something. I'm not trying to rush. The, no, no. See, I disagree with that. No, you're wrong. No. So what I hear you saying is, Pastor, you are too long-winded. Pastor, we need to get out of here on time. See, that's why I love that dude right there. He just, he gonna, he gonna tell me whatever he think I want to hear. <laughs> I love that guy, man. I'm telling you, you only get one or two of those in life. And I just praise God for, for you, uh, Nelson. All right, listen to me. Okay, now, now here's another thing to remember. And this is too much, but I got, oh, uh, I'm, oh. Ah, uh, I, I, I got to do this. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to just do this because I want this to be so substantive that you can be better when you leave this place. See, part of listening, and you got to understand this, that 70% of communication is unspoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you got to maintain eye contact when you're talking to somebody, especially when you, it's, uh, it's a conflict. Yeah. Open body posture, not closed and Here's another thing that's going to be good for all you millennials and all you young adults. Shut off all the screens. I'm not about to sit up here and talk to you while you're watching Housewives and the ball game. Cut that mess off. I'm talking right now. It's more important than that mess. Put it on TiVo. Watch it next week. We're not going to solve nothing where half your attention is divided. No, no, no. Shut the screen. Shut the cell phones off. Shut the TVs off. Shut the tablets, the computer. I just got to do this one last email. Shut it off. I love you. I lo I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not. I love you. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, appreciate. Somebody say appreciate. Appreciate. Pastor, what do you mean by Appreciate. Let the other person know that you value them and that you are seeking to understand their perspective. Let me put some Bible on it. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, though it cost you all you have, get understanding. Get understanding. V. V. That's validate. Somebody say validate. When you validate a person's feelings, what you are saying to them is your heart and your emotions are important to me, whether you agree with them or not. Yeah, because I told you feelings not right or wrong. They just are. Yeah. Okay. When you validate somebody, don't, don't use judging statements that invalidate how they feel. Like, you are so sensitive. You always overreact. You crazy. That's ridiculous. That ain't never happened. That, that's, that's judging. What's the big deal? You are so dramatic. That's, that's, that's judging. Yeah. Is it that time of the month? That's judging. Yeah. Don't, don't invalidate. Validate their feelings. Okay. Last one. The A in lava stands for apologize. Somebody say apologize. Many of us, listen to me, 
John, play something for me. I'm done. Many of us struggle to apologize because we feel like if I forgive you, you'll forget how much you hurt me. And then some of us, we go overboard in the other direction. We apologize for everything. You don't even know what you did wrong. You just, I apologize. You just want the conflict to be over so fast. You're rushing towards peace. But peace is a process. Often uncomfortable. But in both of those cases, listen to me everybody, we missed the point. Because this is my last point. Intimacy is achieved through forgiveness. Do you know it took God giving his son being willing to forgive us of all our mess? That's how we got access to him. Because he's forgiven us. That's what the Bible says. And it's on that screen. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind to one another tenderhearted forgiving each other just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Be kind to one another tenderhearted forgiving each other as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Was anybody blessed?